Hello and welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Keegan. I'm the owner of Floofy Studios, a studio dog photography company in Vancouver, BC. Whoa, that's got a bunch of hair in my mouth. I hit 10K on Instagram. If you have not seen that video, go check it out. I posted it last week. I'll leave it down below. But after that happened, I've been getting so many people messaging me asking what kind of camera I use, what kind of lens I use, what is in my camera bag. So, believe it or not, that is what today's video is going to be about. <laughs> so, let's start with the itty bitties. I keep two batteries on me at least at all times, fully charged, and a charger, just in case. <laughs> because the worst thing that could happen to you on a shoot is having all of your batteries be dead and you're pretty much screwed. If you have no batteries and no battery charger, camera no go. <laughs> no pictures will be taken. Next, my transmitter. This connects my camera to my lights, which I'm going to get to at the end because I just got my camera and I'm actually filming on it. So I'll show you guys that at the end of this video. With the transmitter, you need batteries. And ta -da, battery charger. You can get these on Amazon, they're super cheap. I'll leave all the links below. This is a lifesaver. You can actually do AAA and AA batteries, so I'm pretty obsessed. Nice, easy, keep it in your bag. Like I said with the other batteries, you do not want something so small like a dead battery to ruin your entire shoot. That's just amateur hour. Next, memory card. Ah, hello? <laughs> This is a 64 gigabyte. Most people would do just fine with the 64 gigabyte. I choose to go with the 128 because I'm shooting a large amount of photos in one day and it's such a pain in the ass to use more than one memory card per photo shoot because then you're exporting so many different things onto your computer and it just gets kind of messy. So I choose to go with the biggest. 128 gigabyte byte is the best. You get them on Amazon. Again, I think the 128 gigabyte ends up being slightly cheaper than the 64, kind of like a bulk price, I suppose. Again, all the links will be below. If you are photographing dogs, the main thing that you need to have on handy is a lens cloth and lens cleaner. Because as you know, dogs have no spatial awareness and they're full of slobber and most likely peanut butter. The amount of times that I get a dog come right up to my lens and bop their snoot right onto my lens, leaving a nice, beautiful smudge mark right in the middle is pretty much every five minutes. Which brings me into my next tip. You should probably get yourself some sort of lens cap or covering to go over your lens because if you are shooting with a DSLR, that lens is probably pretty expensive and you're going to want to keep it protected because snoots are soft and wet, but claws <laughs> are damaging and can break your lens. So you do not want that to happen. I believe I got my lens cap for 60 bucks at Henry's works perfectly fine. I've had it for a year and a half, two years already now, and there's not even a scratch on it. Because I am a dog photographer, you constantly need treats on you. If you don't have treats, good luck getting your model to do anything for you. They're immediately going to get frustrated, lose interest, and not want to look at your camera. So do yourself a favor, because if you're a woman, you most likely have no pockets on you. Get yourself a little treat pouch. Mine is looking extremely ratchet, <laughs> but I got it for $10 on Amazon. It straps around, yes, exactly like a fanny pack <laughs> and makes treats easily accessible for you. Bonus has a top zipper as well where you can put chapstick in. That's just a game changer for me. This was hands down the best purchase I made in 2020. Next is my iPad. I put all of my photo release forms on the iPad so that my clients can just sign with their finger. This eliminates printing paper and having extra things to bring to the photo shoot and also, hello, saving the environment. I make all my photo release forms on Word and then I airdrop them to my iPad. So like I said, I'll show you an example actually. Just kidding, it's dead. <laughs> 
this is so much easier than paper and pencil. What are you going to do with all of the photo release forms after the fact? Put them into a file, probably lose them, and never look at them again. This way, everything is full in folders in their proper section and you can refer back to them at any point. Next, I always have some sort of external hard drive. I wouldn't say this is specifically for the photo shoot itself, but after the fact, if I did not have an external hard drive, I would not be able to do any sort of work. <laughs> Unless you have the brand newest MacBook out there, your computer probably does not have the capacity to hold all of the photos you're going to be taking as a photographer. So get yourself a $100 external hard drive. It's on Amazon as well. Gotta love Amazon. I'll leave all the links below. Check it out. I like that one specifically because it has a childproof casing. And I'm very clumsy and I do drop things pretty much on the regular. So. This makes me feel a little bit safer that if I do drop it, all of my work for the last couple months won't just go down the toilet, essentially. This goes without saying, but your phone behind the scenes videos are the best for photo shoots. I have a, an assistant, AKA my lovely boyfriend, who comes to all of the photo shoots with me to take behind the scenes videos of all the cute doggos that we get to meet. That way you can share it to your social media, share it to the YouTube videos, and just genuinely look back at them and enjoy how awesome your job is. So this video is specifically what's in my camera bag, so I'm not going to go too in depth with everything that I use for a photo shoot, but I did want to show you what lights I use. Ooh, ah. I shoot with Pro Photo, and no, this is not sponsored. None of this video is sponsored. I wish. Pro Photo, please feel free. <laughs> um, these are the bee's knees kind of lights. They are for anybody who's ready to make a big investment. Let's just say that. I use the Pro Photo B1X and the Pro Photo D2. I use them both at photo shoots. One is cordless and one is not. I'll save for another video, go through all the soft boxes and backdrop stands and backdrops that I use. But today we'll just keep it simple with what's in my camera bag specifically. So, like I said, I'm filming with my camera and lens. So let me take you off put my, get you back onto my phone for video so I can show you what camera I shoot with. Okay, now I'm back. Really weird to be switching between my camera and phone to be filming now that I'm used to the Canon. But what I shoot with, I've actually been meaning to do this video for a while, but I wanted to wait because I've had my eye on this camera for about six months now. I really, really wanted to get it, but I, held off and I finally got it. So that's why I'm doing this video today. But I got it, the Canon R6. I am obsessed to say the least. I was shooting with the 6D beforehand and it's a, definitely a beautiful camera, but to upgrade to the R6 has been fabulous. I'm, I've never been a photographer that has like tons of cameras and tons of lenses. I get what I need for the job that I want to do and learn with what I have. I mean, money doesn't grow on trees, so lenses and camera bodies are hella expensive and I just have what I have. And if I don't absolutely need it, then I don't buy it. So I did a lot of research on this camera and I ended up just pulling the trigger on it because it just kind of checked off all my boxes. But the reason why I love it so much is because it has a flip out screen. So it's great for filming YouTube videos as well. And it has an extremely fast uh, frames per second, which means you can catch all of those funny treat catching faces and peanut butter tongues. Basically just good for any sort of action photography. And that's what do photographing dogs is because they're nutty as heck. My lens is a 17 to 40 millimeter. I typically stay on 17 millimeters because I like the wide angle look. I get very close up to my subjects, pretty much a foot away from their face, and it really makes their head look humongous, like a beanie baby look from back in the 90s, if you know what I'm talking about. And lastly, my hand strap. I used the neck strap like regular photographers do for a really long time. And when I started photographing dogs, I switched to this. Holy heck, a game changer. I, my wrist was getting so sore photographing these dogs and I knew that I had to pick something that was going to help a little bit. 
and this is fabulous. It has a little snap button, so I can take it on and off very easily. I will never, never use my camera without it now. It's such a, I love it. I just absolutely love it. So yeah, that is about it. Like I said, I'm going to do another video on kind of my whole light system and soft boxes I use and all those little, not little, huge things that make my studio what it is as well. But that's for another video. Let me take you off the phone, get you back onto the camera and we'll finish up. Okay guys, well, that's it for today. A nice short, easy video of a little bit of behind the scenes of what Floofy Studios uses for their photo shoots. How do we get these cute ass pictures of these wild, nutty dogs? <laughs> A lot of patience. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button as well as subscribe and leave a comment below. Do you guys use any of the same products? Do you recommend anything else? Any other lenses that you think that I would love? I would love to hear your feedback on it. Leave a comment below and don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Floofy Studios to see all of our hella cute dog pictures. See you guys next week. Peace.